What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, January 5th, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram with the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. A three-minute collection of clips for the upcoming X-Files Revival series released Sunday seems official but gives a few spoilers. The preview hints at some plot points and spells out a few others in the collection of clips. Though it's been 13 years since the TV series ended and neither film broke box office records, the revival of the X-Files has stirred lots of anticipation to see Mulder and Scully back at its Uncovering the Weird. A couple of plot points made clear in the preview are pretty large. First, that Mulder and Scully had a son who Scully put up for adoption to protect him from the conspiracy. He's now 15 years old and Scully is wondering about him. The other is someone has taken all of Mulder's files. He left the FBI over a decade ago, so it's not surprising someone cleaned out the space. But the issue puts Mulder and former boss Skinner at odds, especially because it appears the duel have been called back to investigate a few things. Some of the other clues are that Agent Doggett and Reyes will also join in at some point, and the revival will use elements of both the show and the movies. The series returns on Fox Sunday, January 24th. The CW has announced that Robbie Amell will return to The Flash, but to reprise a different version of his character, Ronnie Raymond, a.k.a. Firestorm. Once the series returns from its mid-season break, Amell will be featured in a future episode as Ronnie Raymond of the alternate dimension Earth 2, where he has become the villainous Deathstorm. Executive producer Andrew Kreisberg said to Entertainment Weekly, We are beyond excited to have Robbie back on The Flash. You can't keep a good Firestorm down. Only this time he's back with the twist, a deadly Earth 2 version of our beloved Ronnie in the form of Deathstorm. Ryan will return alongside the Earth 2 version of his wife, series regular Caitlin Snow, played by Danielle Panabaker, who will appear as the deadly killer of Frost, as seen in a recent promo announcing the show's return. Raymond was last seen during Season 2's premiere, heroically sacrificing himself to save Central City. In December, the network also announced that Mark Lester would return as Edbard Thawne, a.k.a. Reverse Flash, as well. The Flash returns January 19th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on The CW. Colton Haynes responded to speculation about his sexuality Saturday. The 27-year-old actor appeared to come out as gay in a Tumblr post after a fan expressed excitement about Haynes' report secret gay pass. The person said, When I found out Colton Hayes had a secret gay pass, I got so excited even though I know it makes absolutely no difference in my life. Haynes responded to the post on his account writing, Was it a secret? Let's all just enjoy life and have no regrets with a series of emojis. The actor said he is so stoked for the new year, the day previous, tweeting, No fear this year, cheers, hashtag 2016. Haynes has opened up about his struggle with anxiety and agoraphobia last month, revealing it's been a constant battle for him since fifth grade. He told fans, also struggling, that they're not alone and encouraged them to, quote, fight, fight through. He wrote on Twitter, anxiety has put me in the hospital countless amounts of times, whether it's been fainting, hyperventilating, or seizures, I've been through it. Just know you're not alone, it affects more people than you would ever know. We can overcome this, we can fight through it, and will. Haynes is known for playing Jackson Whittemore on MTV's drama Teen Wolf, and presently portrays Roy Harper, a.k.a. Arsenal, on the CW series Arrow. The superhero series is in the fourth season and will return from mid-season break, January 20th. Anne Hathaway beat the paparazzi to the punch, posting a first photo of her baby bump to social media when she saw cameramen taking her picture. On Sunday, the actress posted a first pregnancy photo of herself on a beach wearing a red bikini. As she explains in the caption, she chose to snap the sh- to share the snap after she was spotted by photographers. The Oscar winner wrote, So, posting a bikini pic is a little out of character for me, but just now, while I was at the beach, I noticed I was being photographed. She also so, caption, I figured if this kind of photo is going to be out in the world, it should be an image that makes me happy and one that was taken with my consent and with the filter. 
News broke that Hathaway was pregnant with her first child with husband Adam Shulman back in November. The two have been married since 2012. Hathaway will next be seen to reprise her role as the White Queen in Alice Through the Looking Glass, due out in theaters May 27th. British comedian Ricky Gervais has offered an advance meta culpa for anything he might say as host of next weekend's Golden Globe Award ceremony. The actor and filmmaker has earned mixed reviews for mocking the celebrity attendees during his pre- three previous engagements as the MC of the telecast, which honors excellence in film and television. Gervais tweeted, Because I can see the future, I'd like to apologize now for the things I said at next week's Golden Globes. I was drunk and didn't give a shit. This year's event is to air live on NBC January 10th. Gervais is best known for his work on the British television comedy series The Office, Extras, Life is Short, and Idiot Abroad, and Derek. Khloe Kardashian wasn't impressed by Scott Disick's apology Sunday on the episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashian. The 31-year-old reality star reacted to the 32-year-old club promoter crying during his sit-down with her, mom Kris Jenner, and sisters Kourtney Kardashian and Kim Kardashian West on the episode telling fans she was shocked when Disick showed up. She tweeted, I was literally speechless when Scott walked in. I hate people who play victim. Take accountability, people. Own your actions. Sometimes I'm way too direct but I am all about protecting the ones I love. My intentions are good. Disick, who split from Kourtney Kardashian in July, says he realizes he's been in the wrong a long time and apologized for embarrassing the family. He admitted to being terribly unhappy and expressed suicidal thoughts, saying he would kill himself were it not for his kids. Disick has struggled with alcohol abuse for years, but has reportedly said he's in a very healthy place since leaving rehab again in November. He and Kourtney Kardashian share six-year-old son Mason, three-year-old daughter Penelope, and one-year-old Rain, and reunited over Thanksgiving. Khloe Kardashian herself is busy with estranged husband Lamar Odom, who remains hospitalized. The 36-year-old former NBA player is continuing to recover after being discovered unconscious in October and appeared in a new photo with his children last week. Rebecca Robertson and boyfriend John Ree Laughlin are engaged. The 27-year-old reality star announced the news with the photo Saturday on Instagram, writing, Our story starts here. I said yes to my best friend for life. She later added, After a long time of patiently searching, I found the ultimate gem, Jeremiah 29. Uh, colon 11. Robertson told Us Weekly, we have been walking on the beach shells hunting for about an hour and I saw this beautifully beautiful swirly shell hidden in the sand and the ring was also hiding in there. He got on one, on his one knee as I pulled the ring out and he said, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you spend the rest of your life with me? She revealed, we are thinking nine months to the year before the wedding. We are beyond happy and thankful to our family for leading up to this chapter of our lives, and we are so excited to see what God has in store for our future. Robertson and Laughlin have been together since October 2014. The reality star told the magazine she had no idea her beau was planning to propose, saying her friends and family did a really good job hiding his intentions. Robertson is the eldest child of Willie Robertson and Corey Robertson, who also shared John Luke, Sadie, Willie Jr., and Bella. The couple adopted Robertson in 2004 and announced they are adopting another child Sunday on Instagram. Corey wrote, We have lots of questions about the cute kid popping up in our photos lately. We're excited to be in the process of adopting a new son. He's been with us since May, but we want some privacy and time for him and our family to bond before telling the world. She also added, He's amazing. We are all so thrilled to have another kid around the house. Couldn't keep the good news to ourselves any longer. We appreciate your prayers and support for our family. Love, the Robertsons. Robertson and her family star on A&E reality series Duck Dynasty will return for a ninth season January 13th. In a new sneak peek for the upcoming 20th season of The Bachelor, former contestants Becca Tilly and Amber James are seen arriving on uh, arriving to compete for Ben Higgins' heart. Higgins was named a new Bachelor after he came in third place during Caitlin Bristow's season of The Bachelorette, while Tilly and James were eliminated during Chris Soule's time on the show. In the new clip, Tilly and James are seen stepping out of a limo in an engagement excuse me, elegant black dress to great series host Chris Harrison. 
Uh, he explains to the two women, obviously, I've been expecting you. Ben has not. Tilly tells Harrison before the pair walks off to greet the other contestants who are less than thrilled by their arrival. I don't know if I've ever been this nervous in my entire life. While speaking with Good Morning America Monday, Higgins explained how he took his time before deciding to return to the reality dating show. The 26-year-old said, I think it was a lot of to consider. When they asked initially, I think I just wanted to process everything to make sure it was the right decision for me. And ultimately it was. It definitely was. When asked about the upcoming season, Higgins explained how his time on the show will separate itself from the others. He explained, I think any time you get a good a group of people in a house together day one person, I think things will happen. It's life and how people interact with each other. Every season's going to be different. So this season is definitely different than previous ones. Recently, Bristol and Bachelorette winner Sean Booth shared their engagement photo via Instagram. Season 20 of The Bachelor returns Monday, January 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC. Scalebound, the next action role-playing game from the celebrated Studio Platinum Games, has been delayed until 2017. The Xbox One exclusive was first revealed during Microsoft's E3 2014 pre uh, press conference with Bayonetta game director Hideki Kamiya leading development on the project. Platinum Games made the announcement and updated fans on the game's development on their official website stating, Development on the game is going well and we're really happy with how it's coming together. Scalebound is one of the biggest games Platinum Games has ever created, an epic adventure filled with exploration and fantasy gameplay, inventive multiplayer, and action-packed battles on an unbelievable scale, all set in a beautiful and evolving world. It's the game our team has always dreamed of making. The statement continued, in order to deliver uh, on our ambitious vision and ensure that Scalebound lives up to its expectations, we'll be launching the game in 2017. This will give us the time Time needed to bring to life all the innovative features and thrilling game plan experiences that we have planned. In a recent interview with GameSpot, Kamaya have elaborated on the game's challenging development, saying, for better or worse, this game is just filled with challenges for us. In the meantime, Platinum Games is also reportedly developing a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game entitled Mutants in Manhattan after a new trademark outed its existence. John Stamos had a misunderstanding with Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen over Fuller House. The 52-year-old actor claimed as much in an interview Monday on The Howard Stern Show. Stamos will reprise Uncle Jesse on the Full House sequel series, but upset the 29-year-old designers by not contacting them about the new show. The star said, I think there was some confusion. They said, first, I didn't ask them, and I didn't take, I didn't personally, but I was told they were asked, so I had a knee-jerk reaction and said, bullshit. I did ask them, and they got upset, so I did call and talk to Mary Kay. He said of the Olsen twins' refusal, they were very, very sweet. They seemed very into it. They were just afraid of acting. They don't consider themselves actresses. They were like, Let's, let us think about it, and it just wasn't for them. Executive producer Robert L. Boyette said the Olsen twins are still very much considered family when he announced the pair won't reprise Michelle Tanner in May. Mary Kay Olsen told Women's Wear Daily at the time she was shocked Stamos didn't contact them about the show. Bob Saget, Lori Laughlin, and Cannon's Cameron Burke are among the other stars who will return on Fuller House on February 26. The series will focus on an older version of Burke's uh, burst character DJ Tanner as she raises her own children. Stamos also discussed his June DUI with Stern, saying he hated himself for being so stupid and ignorant. The actor was sentenced to three years probation and three year, uh, three month alcohol abuse program for the crime in November. Ashley Benson was recently told she was too fat for a role. The 26-year-old actress revealed as much in an interview for the January issue of, issue of Ocean Drive. Benson, who started modeling at age 8, told the magazine she learned to ignore such comments in ever-critical Hollywood. The star revealed, I was just told I was too fat for a part. I'm a size 2. I cried for 30 minutes. But then you have to let it roll off your shoulders or uh, it could cause a serious eating disorder. She also acknowledged 
knowledge. A lot of people in the in this industry hear they need to lose more t- more weight than they should. It does make you strong though, because if you let your that affect you, you can't be in this industry. You go crazy. Benson discussed other pressures last year with Cosmopolitan, telling the publication she and other young stars are often pushed to appear nude on screen. She admitted it's easy to get talked into doing those things, but said she makes it clear she has a line. She says, I never want to do nudity. That's gratuitous. But some people will do anything to get out there. It's crazy that someone can make millions of dollars and have a whole career from a sex tape. But for everyone like that, there's someone like Selena Gomez who's classy and holds herself together. Benson's story about her weight comes amid continued concerns about Hollywood beauty standards. Star Wars actress Carrie Fisher is one star who recently stood up to body shamers, telling fans they should place emphasis on women's brains and not their looks. Benson is best known for playing Hannah Marin on ABC's family series Pretty Little Liars, which will return from mid-season break January 12th. The drama also co-stars Lucy Hale, Shea Mitchell, and Torian Belisario, and airs Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Meredith Vieira announced her talk show, The Meredith Vieira Show, was canceled Monday. The the 62-year-old television personality confirmed this much in a statement to news outlets, saying she is so sorry to see our show come to an end after season two. She added, I am also incredibly proud of the work our staff has done and forever grateful to our supportive viewers. We promise to spend our final weeks producing the best broadcast we know how and have a blast doing so. The Meredith Vieira Show premiered in September 2014 and was renewed for a second season shortly after. The show will continue to air in syndication until season two comes to a close in May, with Vieira slated to cover the 2016 Summer Olympics in August. Word of the show's cancellation comes amid flagging ratings, with viewership down about 25% from the previous year. The series is the least popular syndicated talk show behind Fab Life, which recently lost host Tyra Banks. Vieira previously hosted The View from 1997 to 2006 and The Today Show from 2006 to 2011. She also hosted the syndicated version of Who Wants to Be a Million? from 2002 to 2013 and contributes to NBC Nightly News and Dateline NBC. The body of country singer Craig Strickland was found Monday, eight days after reported missing. An Oklahoma Highway Patrol spokesperson told E! News authorities recovered the 29-year-old back road anthem singer's body and notified his family. Strickland and his friend Chase Moreland were hunting duck on Caw Lake, Oklahoma last week when their boat capsized during winter storm Goliath. Moreland's body and Strickland's dog Sam were found, but the singer was unaccounted for until now. Moreland had tweeted foreshadowing the events to come. In case we don't come back, at Back Road Craig and I are going right through the winter storm Goliath to kill ducks in Oklahoma. Hashtag into the storm. Strickland's wife, Helen Strickland, thanked authorities and the four-state search and rescue team for their efforts Sunday, saying the group's act of kindness and generosity gave her family continued hope. She confirmed the singer was found dead Monday on Twitter. She wrote, At Craig Strickland was found today. He is safe with his father in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for leading us uh, to him today. I will praise you. Amen. Strickland and his wife, who won Miss Arkansas in 2014, married in in the fall of 2014. The singer was the frontman of Back Road Anthem and last released the EP Torn with the band in September. A passing to report, Robert Stigwood, a manager who shepherded the careers of Cream and the Bee Gees before producing a string of smash musical and films, has died at the age of 81. Stigwood began working with Cream in 1966, the same year he briefly lured The Who away from Brunswick Records long enough to record Substitute for his label Reaction Records. Stigwood produced Cream's self-titled debut, also releasing it on Reaction, before signing a new distribution deal with Poldor that brought producer Felix Popolardi into the mix to produce the 1967 celebrated Disraeli Gears. That same year, Stigwood merged his first company with NEMS, which was founded by Beatles manager Brian Epstein. But Epstein's son death led Stigwood to form another venture, the Robert Stigwood Organization. By then, he was already managing the Bee Gees. Later, he oversaw Eric Clapton's post cream career, including the all-star band Blind Faith, as his company began producing theatrical hits such as Hair, 
Old Calcutta, Pippin, and Evita. Sigwood added movie successes with the release of Saturday Night Fever, which featured principal musical contributions from the Bee Gees, Jesus Christ Superstar, Tommy, and Greeks. He also launched the RSO Records label to handle recording artists such as Clapton, including the initially slow-selling but now widely hailed Layla and other assorted love songs by Derek and the Dominoes, and the soundtracks of Fame and The Empire Strikes Back. His notable stumbles include the 1978 film uh, version of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, another vehicle for the Bee Gees, as well as the sequels to Saturday Night Fever and Grease. So they would bounce back in the late 90s, however, with the 1996 big screen adaptation of Evita starring Madonna that won a Golden Globe for Best Motion Picture. He was 81. Jaden Smith recently posted for Louis Vuitton's new women's campaign. The 17-year-old actor sported a patterned skirt, knitted top, and leather jacket from the collection. As seen in the photos, the brand's artistic director, Nikolai Gisikrier, uh, shared on Instagram. Gisikrier wrote, Happy to introduce Jaden Smith at Christian, uh, Christian Gray in the new SS16 at Louis Vuitton ad campaign photographed by Bruce Weber. Smith often makes headlines for his fashion choices, which have included dresses and a Batman costume he wore to prom. He explained his inspiration to GQ in June, telling the magazine he sees clothes as a form of self-expression. He said, I'm just expressing how I feel inside, which is really no particular way because every day it changes how I feel about the world and myself, but I like wearing super drapey things so I can feel as though I'm a superhero, but don't have to necessarily wear superhero costumes. Smith is the son of actor Will Smith and actress Jada Pickett-Smith and the brother of 15-year-old singer Willow Smith. He will appear on the new Netflix series The Get Down and is also slated to reprise Dre Parker in The Karate Kid 2. Gigi Hadid and Zayn Malik continued to fuel dating rumors after the model shared a photo of the shirtless pop star holding her cat. The couple have yet to confirm their relationship despite being seen together holding hands while dining around Los Angeles in November. In December, Malik posted a black and white photo of Hadid affectionately pressing her lips against the former One Direction bandmate as he closed his eyes in their first Instagram photo together. On Saturday, Hadid posted another black and white photo of Malik shirtless cradling her cat without a cat. Though Malik's face is unseen in the snap, his various tattoos plastered across his body are a dead giveaway. Malik's most notable tattoo, a cartoon etching of his ex fiance Perry Edwards, is seen cropped out of the frame. Hadid was last linked with Joe Jonas before the couple reportedly split due to their busy schedules. Malik, meanwhile, ended his engagement to Edwards in August, four months after he left One Direction. Recently, Hadid declared on social media how she was proud of her Palestinian heritage. Pop star Justin Bieber has sparked dating rumors once again after sharing an intimate photo of himself kissing longtime friend and model Haley Baldwin. The pair have been on vacation together in St. Bart since Thursday, hinting at a possible romance across various Instagram photos taken during the trip. On Sunday, Bieber posted on his Instagram account a photo of himself grabbing Baldwin slightly above her waist as the two stars locked lips in a romantic kiss. The uncaptioned photo was followed up by another snap of the two lovebirds enjoying a night out dressed fashionably and getting cozy together while laying down on the couch. Baldwin, the daughter of actor Stephen Baldwin, mentioned in February to E! News that the two are just friends and that she's known him for a long time since he w- since I was about 13. He, she continued, he's just going through a time in his life where he's transitioning in a really positive way and he needs good people around him. And I'm trying to be a good friend and be there for him and support him. In December, Bieber fueled dating rumors that he was seeing Kourtney Kardashian after he posted a mysterious photo on Instagram days after they were spotted together. And now let's look back at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1980, the Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight becomes hip-hop's first top 40, 40 hit. Hip-hop's roots as a musical phenomenon are subject to debate, but its roots as a commercial phenomenon are much easier clear. They trace back directly to January 5th, 1980, when the song Rapper's Delight became the first hip-hop single to ever reach the Billboard Top 40. Prior to the success of Rapper's Delight, hip-hop was little known outside of New York City, and little known ever within New York City by those who orbit were limited to Midtown and Downtown Manhattan. The basic elements of hip-hop 
MC scratching, DJ mixing and scratching, and b-boy break dancing were all in place by 1979, but you cannot walk into a record store in Times Square and buy a hip-hop album. Hip-hop was something you had to experience live in clubs and at parties in neighborhoods like the South Bronx and Harlem. Those were the settings in which founding fathers of hip-hop like Grandmaster Flash, Curtis Blow, and DJ Cool Herc were busy making their names while the crowds at Studio 54 danced away the last days of the disco era just a few miles to the south. Meanwhile, it was a businesswoman from New Jersey who put the two trends together to give birth to an industry. Her name was Sylvia Robinson, formerly a singer and later the owner of a small record label called All Platinum. After hearing a DJ rapping over records in a Harlem club, she said, her, she sent her son Joey to the task of finding someone who could do the same thing on tape. Joey recruited his friend Big Bank Hank from en- Englewood, New Jersey, Pizzeria, and Master G and Wonder Mike from the surrounding neighborhood. This was on a Friday. Sylvia would name the newly formed trio after the Show Hill section of Harlem, chose Cheek's Disco Smash Good Times as a backing track, and scheduled sco- studio time for the following Monday. What happened between that Friday and Monday is the subject of some controversy. It involved Big Bang Hanks borrowing his lyrics almost wholesale from the notebook of Harlem MC Grandmaster Kaz, whose name appears nowhere on the credits or royalty checks of Rapper's Delight. What happened on Monday, however, was straightforward and revolutionary. The making of a record that began, I said, a hip, hop, a hippity, a hippity, and ended up changing the course of music history. Also on this date in 1998, Sonny Bono was killed in a skiing accident. In his characteristically blunt and self-deprecating manner, Sonny Bono transformed himself relatively late in his life, morphing from the shorter, homelier, masculine half of the 1960s husband and wife singing and acting sensation alongside his glamorous third wife, Cher, into a respective California lawmaker and U.S. congressman. On January 5, 1998, Bono's unusual journey was cut tragically short when he was killed in a skiing accident accident while on vacation with his family in South Lake Tahoe, California. The 62-year-old Bono and his fourth wife, Mary, were visiting the Heavenly Ski Resort located on the Nevada-California border, some 55 uh, miles south of Reno, Nevada, with their young son and daughter. Uh, the accident occurred when Bono left his family to ski alone on the afternoon of January 5th. He was reported missing several hours later, and his body was found that evening. Police say Bono had skied into a wooded area and hit a tree. The cause of death was massive head injuries. Coincidentally, Bono's death occurred less than a week after another high-profile accident killed Michael Kennedy, the son of the late U.S. Attorney General and U.S. Senator Robert F. Kennedy, on the ski slopes of Aspen, Colorado. Born Salvatore Bono in Detroit on February 16, 1935, Bono moved to Los Angeles when he was seven years old. As a young adult, he became a songwriter and singer at Specialty Records. He later teamed with the prominent songwriter Phil Spector and sang backup for the Righteous Brothers. While married to his first wife, Donna Rankin, Bono met 16-year-old uh, Sherilyn Skarskazian. They made several recordings together, but struck gold with their 1965 mega-hit, I Got You Babe. Bono divorced Rankin, and in 1969 had a daughter, Chastity, with Cher. They later married. In August 1971, the couple's TV show, Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour, premiered featuring the tall, dark-haired Cher decked out in spangled dresser outfits and the mustachio Bono playing the straight man in bell-bottom pants. The show ran lasted until 1974 when the couples split amid rampant gossip about extramarital affairs. A late comer to politics, Bono got his first start after he became frustrated with the bureaucratic hassle involved in erecting a new sign at the Italian restaurant he owned in Palm Springs, a city in the su- in Southern California desert with a current population of some 40,000 residents. He was like the mayor of the city in 1988 and four years later ran unsuccessfully in the Republican primary for a seat in the U.S. Senate. In 1994, Bono was a seat, won a seat in the House of Representatives as part of a sweeping Republican victory in the House led by Speaker Newt Gingrich. As a lawmaker, Bono struck closely to the conservative agenda, but he was known to reach out across party lines, forming friendships with such prominent liberals as Barney Frank, an openly gay Democratic congressman from Massachusetts. When Bono and Cher's daughter, Chastity, came out publicly as a lesbian in 1995, her father expressed his love and support, but said he cannot reconcile himself to the idea of gay marriage. Re-elected in 1996, Bono continued his campaigns to extend copyright laws and repair the damage 
damage done to Salton Sea, a giant lake in Southern California's Colorado Desert, by large-scale salt mining operations in the region. After for Tuesday, January 5th, 2016, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the entertainment report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.